Let me give you some things. I don't, I don't know how far I'll go with this. But again, even like even preparing to come for the service, use your words of faith. I believe, Lord, as I go to that meeting, you have something for me. Do you know what that means? Then you'll come prepared. That preparation, uh, uh, prepare. you prepare yourself to receive from the Lord. That's a big thing right over there. And I'm going to speak some things regarding that about preparing to receive from the Lord. You know, your preparation to come to church and, and any meeting that you'll ever go, spiritual meeting, and actually even your workplace. But I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to speak about your coming to church and any uh, meeting, spiritual meeting. There is your place that is very important for you to receive from the Lord. You know, the Bible says this. Uh, God says in his word, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. In other words, there is a place, there is a step that you must take. Receiving from God is not automatic. It's the will of God for every man on earth today to be born again and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But are they born again? No. Why is that so? Is it because of God? No. God is not withholding anything, any good thing from any man on earth. Even the one who's thought to be the most wicked one. God paid the price for them through Jesus Christ. Now that is in the world. How much more of you who's, who's now a believer? You're born again. Look at this. Same principle. Your preparation is very important to receive anything from God. And... and um, there's not much which happens if one is not prepared. The realm of the spirit is a reality, just as the realm of the, 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 this natural realm. And especially, in fact, I'll say this, it's more real than this natural realm. Because this natural realm came from the spirit realm. And this natural realm will pass. But the word of God is eternal. So going to any place naturally, you have to prepare. That's why as I'm looking at you today, I'm going back to the basics, okay? These are the basics. These are the ABCs of Christianity. I'm going back to the basics. Now look at this. That's why you prepared to come. At least I see you. You know, you prepared. You didn't show up in your pajamas. You see what I'm saying? You didn't show up in your pajamas. What? You prepared. You knew where you're going. You're going to church. There is that preparation. So also to experience what God has in store for you, you also have to prepare. And in 2 Chronicles 12, 14, uh, talking about King Rehoboam, he says, and he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. So there is heart preparation. Nothing just happens. Preparation is key in experiencing the glory of God. Let's go to Second uh, to First Corinthians 19, 1, and, 1 to 3. And it says uh, that then Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, was such a righteous man. The king of Judah returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And let's go. And Jehu, the son of Hanan, the seer went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. But look at this. Nevertheless, good things are found in you. Good things are found in you. You made a mistake, but good things are found in you. And then he says this, in that you have removed the wooden images, images idolatry, from the land, and you have prepared, you have done what? Prepared your heart to seek God. Heart preparation. Heart preparation. And then 2 Chronicles 27, 1 and 6 says this, Jotham was 25 years old when he became king. In other words, if I was going to talk to you, a 25 year old, and you, your name, whoever you are, 
At 25 years old, you became the president. No one is in faith here for that presidency. I, I like to pastor president. At 25 years old, you all, are they going to say, yeah. Oh, God didn't call you for that. Okay. Anyway, we can have 50 presidents. Maybe it's just one of you. At 25 years old, when he became king, he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. So Jotham became mighty. Look at that. Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. Preparation. Preparation. Remember the voice in the, in the wilderness? John the Baptist? When he showed up, what was his message? Prepare ye the way. Prepare ye the way. He started saying, he came Matthew 3, 3, started saying, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. The Lord is coming. God is coming in the flesh. What is requiring of you is preparation. Repent, he started talking to them, for the kingdom of God is near. So there is the aspect of preparation if you are going to receive anything from the Lord. And when you start looking at the parable of the sower, like in Mark chapter 4, we seeing also is about preparation. The seed is incorruptible. The heart of the person who is hearing the word has to prepare, has to be prepared to receive. Little preparation Little activities taking place. Much preparation in their heart, much happens. The people when you speak to them, are, I've, I've, let me say myself, the people when I speak to, I feel like they are like a sponge. They absorb. Their hearts are ready. I'm telling you, the individuals speak to them a little bit. Uh, all of a sudden, you, you, you get that quickening of the spirit. You are ready to speak something from the Lord. But there are people, I think they are not here and they are not watching us. There are people, it's a concrete. Why is that so? It's because of the heart. The heart issue. Preparation. There's no good preparation. Good preparations. Anyone who's ever had a wedding, if you think about of your wedding, you want a prepared team. Not the cake is in Vika and you are here, it's time to cut the cake. Where is the cake? By the way, <laughs> what happened? I don't know. Who was in charge? I don't know. What, is, what does that mean? No preparation. What does it bring in? Confusion. Confusion. Uncertainty. Fear. Panic. Because the, the person is not prepared. Unpreparedness. That's, that, that, that's really uh, the work of the enemy. But the parable of the soul is about preparation. We see in the scriptures that Jesus even could not, in some places, could not do much. Why? Because people are not prepared. People are not prepared. They, they, they are not prepared to receive him. Yet there are people who are so prepared that he didn't have to say anything. He showed up. They saw him. They tapped into what he had and received. And you find in the scripture sometimes Jesus say, Jesus say this, your faith has made you whole. Your faith has healed you and delivered you. Your faith has saved you. Say my faith. So there is your place. God has done all. Through his son Jesus Christ. There is your place. There is my place. To receive from the Lord. That, that is crucial. For our healing. That is crucial. For our. For the utterance. In John 16 12. Jesus told the disciples. That I have a lot of things to tell you. But you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. What is, does that mean? I have much. I have utterance. I have words. But I am limited by your ability 
to receive them. You never want that to happen, is that so? God says, he is standing right before you, and he says this, I have a lot to tell you. But you know what the problem is? You can't receive. You have all these needs around you, but you can't receive. And there are several factors, actually, that determine that or contribute to that. So many of them, people are preoccupied, preoccupied with other things. You know, I've been, I've been in meetings, and, you know, uh, uh, let, me, let me start by this. I've been in meetings, like I was in so many meetings, and, uh, and I have in Pastors Wade and Carla, and mostly Pastor Wade. And some have had quite a bit since Pastor Wade went to be with the Lord. I've, I've been in meetings with Pastor Carl. Uh, and, and sometimes in meetings, just maybe in a crowd like, like this, you hear the Lord saying something. So profound, you, you can tell that the, the atmosphere has changed. And the Lord starts saying something. And you see someone standing and going. And I think like, is that person hearing? And after the meeting, mostly such. And see my heart in this. Would you please help me? Do you know how God heals? Do you know how God delivers? He sent his word and deliver them and heal them and deliver them from their destructions. They don't pay attention to the word because they are preoccupied. They have not prepared their hearts to receive. I, I really do this um, for, for sure. If I, I've been the presence of a man and woman of God, I pay attention to what God has for me through that person. If I know that I'm going to prepare myself to go for that meeting. If we're having to, to sit down and eat or, or whatever it is, I'll just be paying attention. I've, I've had, you know, like the privilege I had for years, years. I knew, I think the last time Brother Jerry, Dr. Jerry Savillo was here in Kenya was 2001, I think. 2000 or 2001, I think 2000. I think it was the year 2000. And then, uh, but I knew in my heart I was going to meet with him. I just knew that. I listened to his message, he read his books and all that. And I kept telling people that he'll be coming back. And I, I, I told the staff several times, he'll be coming back. It may not be just because... I'm believing, maybe some others are believing, but even if I'm the only one believing, you'll see him here. He'll come. Then when he came, back, he came in 2013, I had the privilege of being the one from, uh, let me pause right there, from being back there in 1991 at K, I mean 1999 in KICC, seated behind there, having come from Dandora. Not all Dandora is bad, you understand where I lived. My room, no bed, walked much of the distance I walked. I was like Davy Walker. You know, I walked. You say, I walked around. <laughs> don't think about any other person, it's Davy, okay? I'm not thinking, don't think about, if you've been delivered from another part of the world, don't, don't think of anything else. This is church, Davy Walker. I'm not talking about Johnny Walker. <laughs> this is the view. <laughs> I walked. I walked much of my, you know many places that I went to, and look at this. Then he comes back, and I'm the one going to the airport to pick him up. The first face he was going to see was mine. I felt, man. I felt like I died and gone to heaven to see all the prophets. <laughs> That's what I felt. And here he was, he didn't, you he, he know, he had heard of, of me for years, but he said, actually, uh, when I was standing, you know, the migration, and we were standing behind there, he says, when I saw you, I looked at so many people, but when I saw you, I knew that was Davis. I thought, again, I feel like I'm dead, and I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Meet the prophets. What a privilege. We had dinner, I think Pastor Carl and 
myself and other Pastor JB Whitfield and his wife and all that. So we are privileged to sit down. And you know what I had? I had my book. I have week, actually, I think it's this past week, I've seen some things I wrote when he was, we are having dinner and just sitting and just chatting and all that, but I was waiting for the word. I was prepared to hear. By the time he was leaving, and you remember this, at the door, he started, he started prophesying over me. I was prepared. I was prepared. To tell him, uh, Brother Jerry, would you leave me with some dollars? I, I, I understand you have a plan. Do, do, will you give me some? I'm not looking for that. In fact, Tina and I had a seed. I'm prepared. Why? Those words are powerful, are important to me. My destiny is determined by God's word. Your destiny is determined by God's word. And the word, the word you prepare to receive, that word will change your life. That's how lives are changed. That's why others are stagnated for a long time while others make progress. That's why others are saying, give me, while others are saying, what can I do? Why? That's a heart prepared to serve. I did, and he came back, I think, 2018, and I was privileged again to go pick him up from the airport. And I had, I, I, I had you know, prophesy over me again. He came back la last year, but one, last year, actually. You know, pray some prayers, uh, significant prayers and all that, prophesy. What is that? You must prepare your heart to receive. From Look at this. Jesus standing. And there he says in, in, in Matthew chapter 13, he could do no mighty work. Well, let's go over there, in fact. Hallelujah. In such a cold day and uh, the time like the way it is, you have to wear masks everywhere. You don't go to many places on Sunday. Is that so? So you have much of the afternoon. Of, is that so? Now, did you prepare yourself to come to church? Or you say, one hour I'm gone. That preacher, I know he takes quite some time. If he goes to 12, 15, I'll go out. No, Asha will stop me. <laughs> say, that's not me. I am here to receive. Let's go to Matthew 15, uh, 13. There are several scriptures there. Uh, in verse 33, 53, sorry. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there when he had come to his own country. That's usually is the problem many times. Familiarity. Familiarity. I had someone tell me one time, like, yeah, uh, I'd call the individual, and they said, uh, I was checking out of what they are doing and there are some situations that are happening. But he says, yeah, Davis, you know that I don't come to your church. I say, that's fine and that's not the reason I was calling you. Yeah, but you know, you know I'm not your church member. Huh? Okay. Yeah, I understand that. And that's not the reason I was calling you. Uh, yeah, you know, I've known so many people, you know, like uh, Bishop so-and-so, Bishop so they've been my friends. I served even in such and such. Uh, you serve, but your heart is full of thorns and stones. And that affected the person badly. Why? Because there was no honor in him. No, no, none was saved. None was saved. He taught them in the synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? We know that guy. We know that guy. Is not his mother called Mary? What has that to do with his mother? You understand? You are seeing the mighty works. What is the problem? Concentrate on what he's saying and follow the mighty works. Forget about his name, what you call him in your village. <laughs> and then he says this. Um, 
And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Where, where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. Wow. Man, that's, that's terrible. They had not prepared themselves. Look at these people. Look at this church. Here is God in the flesh. Would you want to spend time, you know, if God just manifesting and spend time with him, will you start thinking like, are you the one who created? Did you create the stars? No, I don't believe that. How did you do it if you are God? What will be your attitude? Let me tell you the attitude of Abraham, and you'll find that in the scriptures. Abraham said this, I think in Genesis 18. Abraham was prepared quickly. Let's go. We'll come back into it. Oh, let me finish this and then we'll go to Genesis um, 18. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not, he di he did not do many works there because of their unbelief, not prepared to receive from the Father. Go over quickly. Let's, let's see over here in Genesis 18. Praise God. Look at this in verse, verse 1. We'll do some reading a little bit here. Then the Lord appeared to him, to Abraham, at Terebinth, the trees of Mamre, and he was sitting in the tent in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed, him, bowed himself to the ground. Good mannerisms, mannerisms or good manners. When a person is visiting and you are at the door and you see them, please move towards them. Let me help you. Victor Faith Church family, we are, we are prosperous, we are excellent people. That's so all. You just don't stand right there. So you've come. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In my in my growing up, in, my, in, our, in our home, if one came, you came with things, you are carrying anything, we go for, if in um, my home, we we'll see you coming. You know, it's in the village, no, no, no gate or anything. We'll see you coming. So we come out of the house and go for, come to meet with you. And if you are carrying anything, we carry and you take it and whatever it is, we set it there, waiting. And then the First time I ever saw someone do this was people come in at that person's house and then just looking. Karibuni. Okay. And they carry their things and they carry to help, you know, to, to bless those people and they'll put, they, they put, they stay with their things. And when they are going, say, by the way, we brought this to you. I found that rude. I almost feel like you can go, I can go back with my things. Okay. If in church you don't want to receive to be taught good manners, oh yeah, you'll be taught good manners. <laughs> go out. Look for people. When they are coming in, just help them. Help them. That is me. Open the door. So good to see you. And then, so he did that, he ran and bowed down. He was so sensitive. Look at this. He was so sensitive. He saw there were men, but he was able to discern they are not just men. And the Bible says some have, what, uh, have entertained angels unawares. Why? Because of their hospitality. That generous heart, heart that is prepared, is hospitable. Let me say this. A hospitable heart is a heart that is prepared to serve. Or a hospitable person. I think I'll say it in this one. A hospitable person is a, has a heart that is prepared to serve. Therefore, they are open to people. Prepared. And then he said, so I will not so much go into this. But then, and said, my Lord, I found, if I found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Please let a little water uh, be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I'll bring a morsel of bread. Then you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by as much as you have come to your, to your servant. Then say, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent. So 
to Sarah and said quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. And Abraham read to their heart. No, no, it's amazing. God likes cakes. I didn't say that, okay. <laughs> you do what you want to do with cakes. But he said, and knead it and make cakes. And Abraham read to the heart, took a tent and good calf, gave it to the young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree as they ate. <laughs> serving, 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 serving. Expectation. Expectation. To receive. Do you know actually after all that is when uh, the men when they stood in verse 17 says and after they have eaten, they had eaten and the Lord said shall I have from Abraham what I'm doing since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed and the year after they got their son Isaac. Preparation to receive. Let me give you some things over here. <clears throat> I remember years, years, let me give you some, some things, maybe that will help you also. I remember some years ago, uh, I was talking to him, actually a recent church member, Martin Gishovi, I was talking to him the other day. Uh, I think it should have been 208 or 209. But he came to church, and he had, had some issues in his, in his stomach, really. This is what really issues. Stressed him out completely. And then he he started crying out to God. I said, God, I need your help. And on and on and on. I didn't, I didn't know all that he did. But he was prepared. Needing help from the Lord. Then he came for the service that Sunday. And I remember I came up. And I told the present worship leader, let's sing hallelujah again. Hallelujah. And we sang it. And then I went back there. So I stood there. I was lifting up my hands, closed my eyes. I felt a hand. I felt a hand right there in my stomach. Boom. I thought, even if it's an usher, they're helping me. Do they come and touch my, my belly? That my, I seriously, I opened my eyes, and there was no one. I said, Lord, what's that? And he told me this. Someone has been healed from stomach issues. I came up. I gave that word of knowledge. He was healed. I was talking to him, I think, last week, and, and he told me this. Pastor, from that, th from that day, I got healed and I'm free. Completely. What was he doing? I think days before he had really been crying to the Lord and he fasted and prayed, asking the Lord, I need your help. If I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm sure, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying this one right, but when he came that in the service, he was fasting. Was he? Martin, yeah. Was he fasting? I can see faith. But anyway, he, he, he came over here. And because he was prepared to take his healing, God healed him. He did his part. Do you have to buy? No, I'm talking about preparation. And God's manifestation of healing just came upon him. And he got healed. Those are over 10 years, actually. And that was such an issue of what he was dealing with. Yesterday in the men's meeting, we were praying. I, I really was looking forward to the meeting, getting ready. So we had a, a, prayers, a prayer time from 6.30 to, to 8 o'clock. And at some point, I knelt down and started praying. And it came to about quarter to 8. And I told, I told men, I've done this even physically. When you feel like you are so tired to continue, when you start taking those steps of faith, it's amazing how, how much energy comes upon you and you are able to do more when you had thought earlier before then you had thought that you had come to the end of yourself. So let's, let's, let's take some, four, some uh, few more minutes and pray. And then I, I continue praying in the Holy Ghost. And something gripped, right, is, right, gripped me right here. And I asked, Lord, what is that? And he said this, Someone is being healed right now, delivered from anger. They've been so angry. And I stood up and I said, and I said, I don't, brother, I don't have, you don't have to raise up your hand or anything. That's fine. But 
uh, I'd like for you to share with me because you've been delivered from that. Approach me, you know, later on and tell me of what has happened. And the brother told me this. Pastor, that was me. With the tears in his eyes, he told me this. I've been angry, Pastor. And I, when I came to this meeting, I was crying out to God and say, God, whatever it takes, please, I want to be free. I was crying out to God. And you know what happened? He was prepared. Whatever it was going to take, he was going to receive. What happened? God delivered him from that anger. Had that anything to do with me? My part was prepare, preparing to hear his voice. His part was prepared to prepare to receive. Faith came in. Healing, deliverance manifested. Let me read a testimony of Miss Wairim Priske this past Wednesday. Sometimes I know you can, I can go scripture after scripture, but when you read out some testimonies, some people wake up now. So yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's good. I, I know that it helps you. It is also it helps you. Is that, does, do testimonies mean anything to you? For me, a lot. A lot. Look at this. Uh, uh, Mrs. Wairimu Priska, yeah, she's there. But she said, back 10 years ago, I injured my left shoulder in a gym. I went to see a doctor, and I was referred to a therapist. I had 10 sessions of deep heating. It felt better, but not completely healed. Doctor told me, uh, told, to, told me to use deep heating ointment whenever it hurts. After, as of this year, it started to ache deep inside. I could not touch exactly where it was hurting, so I can apply the ointment. However, it was aching. I began confessing healing scriptures, 1 Peter 2.24. What was she doing? She was preparing to receive. Confessing. How was the word of God in his mouth and in his heart preceding her miracle? But the pain was not going away. I have never failed to receive healing, but this time it was different. I had a conversation with the Lord. I told him I have done all I, I know how to. Kindly show me where I'm going wrong. As I waited for the answer, I began confessing Ephesians 1, 17. For that eyes of, for the spirit of wisdom and rev, revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of understanding being enlightened, and on and on and on. That the God of my Lord Jesus Christ may give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him concerning my shoulder. So it can be the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him concerning your business, concerning your employment, concerning your marriage, concerning, concerning your education. You see how to apply the word? So she did. And then um, on Wednesday 16th, this past Wednesday, the Lord rearranged my day in such a way that there was no way I was going to miss, I was going to miss Wednesday prayer meeting. I had the small, still voice. A still, a still small voice, say to me, is there a reason that you cannot go to prayer meeting today? I paused for a moment and I said, I know that voice. So I replied, no, Lord, I will go. Let me pause there a bit and say, I've not, put, I've not been putting effort to go to Wednesday prayer meetings. That's a big mistake and disobedience, especially because I did not have a reason not to. Amen, Pastor. A good reason acceptable to God. There wasn't. That Wednesday after prayers, Pastor Davis, by the action of the Holy Spirit, asked, does anyone have pain on the shoulder? Coincidence? I don't think so. That was me. He prayed for me and I was instantly healed. Preparation <laughs> to receive. Saints, I encourage you. Thank you. Now she's, she's, she's helping me. To pastor. Saints, I encourage you to seek God concerning Wednesday prayer meeting. Thank you so much, Mr. Irim. Uh, amen. If you have not been attending, amen, my sister. Praise God. <laughs> there are benefits that you won't get any other way except in the meeting. Amen, my sister. <laughs> and other meetings you are supposed to be in and you are not attending. Amen, amen, my sister. Go ahead. 
I give you all the glory for healing my sh- for, to God for healing my shoulder. Thank you, Pastor, for being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And thank you for helping me to pastor God's people. Amen. 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 Preparation. Preparation. Let me give you some things now. This year comes in. It's a family meeting. So, Pastor. You know, I think uh, SGR, I'm yet to board it, but it leaves at 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, you don't. Let me see SGR uh, experts. <laughs> no. But what time does he leave normal? 8, there's an 8 o'clock going to Mombasa. And there's another one. In the afternoon, 2 o'clock, I think. Yeah. You know, if you went there at 8.10, 8 or 5, 8 or 1, they will, they, will, they will find you and they go back home for lunch because you didn't travel. Why? You must keep time. Is that so? Oh, now you're going to love me even more. You, 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 keep, you know you'll show up there at 8 or 1. I mean, uh, 8 or 1 in the morning, you are left. You're lifted. <laughs> if you show up late, you won't travel. Let me tell you something about preparation to receive. You honor his presence. You sh- don't show up when you want to. You show up when, he's, when he wants you to. You say, no, pastor. God didn't set up the time for 10 o'clock. He did. For the service to begin, he did. He's the head of the church. We seek him. And he says, if two of you agree on touching anything on earth shall be done. So we agreed our services start at 10 o'clock. So what does it mean? He says, in the midst of them, why will I be? So you have an appointment at 10 o'clock. Now these are kind words of a pastor. It's disrespectful to show up when the God who loves you to show up at 10 or 10, 10, 10, 10, 20, 10, 30. That means this, you are not prepared to receive from him. I thought you were going to say, thank you, pastor. I love you. And I thought the ladies are going to say, oh, he's such a love. And I love you say that. That's much love. That's, that means you are not prepared. Preparation. Let me give you an example. Like yesterday, we were starting our men's meeting at 6.30. I was up early in the morning. 6.25, about 6.25 I was here. Why? I, I am I'm honoring God. And secondly, I honor these men that I'm coming to minister to. It is this honor if if they showed up at 6.30 and I'm coming in at 7.05. And I said, man, <laughs> I don't know how many cars today. I don't know how many cars are today, but I don't know how many cars are today. I don't know how many You'll have a say kind of a meeting with no anointing. Because he doesn't own a God. At least you amen, just will help me. It's everything, church. That honor is so critical in receiving from the Lord. That means whatever it takes, Lord, I'll be there and I'll be prepared for whatever you're going to tell me. I'm prepared. I'm preparing my heart. I'm preparing. My, I, I am I'm taking time before the meeting to prepare. We prepare for tests. We prepare for interviews. We prepare to go to the airport. We prepare how much more preparing spiritually that we need to, to go to his house. Eternal things should take predominance in whatever we do. Thank you. All right, let me see, and then before, I read several scriptures before we, we finish. Ask the Lord in this manner. 
Lord, will you please me to sh- will you please show me how to prepare and lead me in the scriptures I, uh, and by the by your spirit of the things that I need to do. Prepare yourself. Joshua three five says uh, Joshua spoke to the children of Israel when they're about to to cross uh, River Jordan. Supernaturally, he asked he, he told people. Verse 5, and Joshua said to the people, sanctify or separate yourself for tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. In other words, prepare yourself for tomorrow. The wonders that God wants to do are determined by your preparation. So honor calls for preparation. We go prepared, as I said, for exams, interviews, go to the airport, in other words, dealing with temporal things. How much more do we need to prepare in receiving eternal things? Second Timothy 2.20, I'll go quickly here. It says, it's but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. For every good work. I think I came in this ministry in that manner. What do you want me to do? Serve at the table, table, that's fine. Do this, that's fine. And by the way, God had told me already, I was a pastor, and I, I, he had called me that, I knew that I was going to be the associate pastor of Pastor Swede and Carla. But whatever they were telling me to do, I was going to do. I was prepared to serve. And I'm still prepared to serve. That should be yours and my preparation. It should be to serve. In Galatians 4.14, listen to what Apostle Paul says. uh, Verse 14 says, And my trial which was in my flesh, you did not despise or reject, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Preparation to receive. To receive what? To receive the vessel. That's very important. To receive the vessel. Because the vessel is carrying that which you need. I spoke to the men yesterday and I I was telling them that I'm not standing here as an expert of men's issues. I'm standing here in the anointing that God has called me in and that anointing will come upon you and help you. I'm not standing here as an expert. But I've released myself to the anointing that God has given me to stand in this office. If it was another uh, something, something else, another one was be able to say something. Uh, in fact, they are asking some things to do with the health. I wasn't going to speak about health you know, in, in that profession. No, I'm going to stand to speak about what God had given to me for the men. So you receive the vessel. And First Thessalonians chapter 2.13, it says this. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing. Because when you received what? When you received what? The word of God, which you heard from us. What does it mean? You are prepared to receive it. You welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. In other words, you give the word of God the honor that it deserves. And it's actually Christ. It's God. The word of God is God. So you are giving him honor. You are paying attention to what is coming forth. That which is, is being spoken. In John 7, 8, Jesus said this, For I have given them the words which you have given me. Praying for the disciples, he's praying to the Father, and he says this, For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them. Them what? Words. And have known surely that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. You receive words. And to receive those words, to receive the word of God, it takes preparation. I know you have experienced this, and sometimes, you know, you come to the service, you have really been praying. I've heard church members do this. They've been praying, they've been in faith, and they come to church, and after the service, say, Pastor, today you are so anointed. That message is powerful. You are so anointed. You'll be so polite to say, praise God. 
But the truth is, I'm always anointed because I prepare to stand and minister the word. The truth is, you are so prepared to receive. Then there was an agreement and there was a change that took place. But it's not like the first Sunday pastor is anointed because it's, it's the salary around and then the second one is gone down. <laughs> no, no, no. I submit to you the truth that we come every Sunday prepared to minister the word of God to you. But look at this. You have to also to be prepared to receive it. Listen, this is where we are going to see much of the glory of God manifesting in our generation when it's not a celebrity kind of a church. The body of Christ is going to be all members of the body rising up in their place and the glory of God shows up. The manifestation. We are not having to raise up uh, you know, uh, church members from the dead on Sunday. So that at some point they come to some place and then they can be able to minister. No, we, we are all up. We are all in faith. There's an explosion in the atmosphere and we are receiving from God whatever he wants to speak to us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to Luke 5. I think this I should be winding up in a moment. Did I, tell, did I say I was winding up in the other scriptures? No, I have some few scriptures before we wind up. Uh, Let's go before Luke 5. Let's go to Matthew 3. Uh, sorry, Luke 5. Let's go to Luke 5. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Preparation. Encourage even your tithes and offerings. Tina and I have done this for many years. Couples, individuals, Saturday night, just have it ready. And pray and take time to, to worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings. And thank him for his provision. Thank him for your family. Thank you for that he's provided for you. And Tina and I do that and, and do this. And, and we take, as we take Holy Communion. And honor God with our tithes and offerings. And then when you come to Sunday, you know, in church, we already, we already know what we've sown. Our hearts are ready. Why? We've prepared ourselves to honor God. Because it's a form of worship. It's actual worship to God. So you've prepared yourself to give. Thank you so much, Brother Martin. And now, uh, God, let's go to verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 17, Luke 5, 17. It says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching, talking about Jesus, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. They came who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. What follows next? And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Was it there? Was it there? Saturated atmosphere. The creator of the universe is ready to heal. It's his will to heal. Listen, it's his will for your healing even this day. Whatever pain, whatever issue you're dealing with, he's here to heal you. Take it. That takes preparation. But you take it by faith. And look at this. Then behold, men brought, in on a, brought on a, a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how, how they might bring him in because of the crowd, that's usually the problem. Sometimes too, Look at this. Sometimes and many times to start receiving from the Lord, you have to deal with the crowd. And people can be a hindrance from you receiving because you are not sure of their opinion. If you come to church, you've prepared and you hear the Lord, I want you to run to the front and just spin and come back to your seat and just shout during praise and worship. Do it. Do it. Uh, I don't know what they will think. Mm. 
People may think I lost my mind. That's a good place to be. Because that means you don't have any carnal mind. You are relying on the Holy Spirit leading you. And you come on spin and go back and sit. And in the moment you go back, they say, God says this, now is the time. He is your healing. And I say, now is the time for that breakthrough. Why is that so? You are ready to obey whatever he tells you to. What's that? Preparation. You remember Naaman? Go wash yourself, dip yourself seven, seven times in the river Jordan. Hey, do you know who I am? You have to deal also with the attitude. Do you know who I am? Okay, I'm, I'm about finished. Then, behold, men brought in, verse 19, and they, when they could not find because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and let him down with his bed through the, the tiling into the midst before Jesus. Now think, these men were radical. Just think about these people are full all over here, windows and all that, and then we start hearing kokoro, kop, kop, kop. And what we see, a bed, bed lot. That was someone's house. Did they care? All what they cared was, this man has to be healed. Can you think about that man say, Musiniangushe Jamani? Say, hold on, hold on. I can't hold, I'm paralyzed. Say, yeah, but you are going to be healed right now. Just be patient. In. And the men were there. They crowded Jesus. And they are not receiving anything. Criticizing him. That takes radical faith, people. To overcome the mindset and the thinking of a crowd. Look at this, what it says, verse 20. Faith is visible. What did he say? When he saw their faith, they had one mind. We are going to that meeting, we are finding Jesus. And our friend is going to be healed. He has to be healed. Jesus saw their faith and he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees, those who are around there, they say to reason, say, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? What were they doing there? Not prepared. John the Baptist had already said, prepare ye the way. They never prepared. They are just the same people, old people, not, not old like in age, but old in their thinking, refusing to receive from God. From God. But then uh, he says, rise up and walk, verse 23. But the, the man, of course, was healed. And immediately, verse 25, he rose up before them, took up what he, was being li- he had been lying on, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. Can you think, can you see him, Brother Francis, after that, you know, the crowd was there. So he's healed, so he's moving through the crowd. Piche. <laughs> they are there, not healed, but he got healed. Why? He was prepared. His friends were prepared to do the extraordinary, whatever it took them to receive from God. And they're all amazed and they glorified God and are filled with fear saying, we have seen this, we have seen strange things today and, and on and on and on. Praise God. Did you receive anything this morning? Prepare. Say prepare. 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 That should be you and I. You're expecting next Sunday and other Sundays coming and other meetings. You are so prepared. So prepared. I remember one time, Pastor Wade, uh, again, they didn't know me. I came to the Bible school. They had no idea who I was. And I went to the Bible school, and we were 16 of us in the class. And he will start saying something. Um, at some point, I knew in my heart, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm believing. I am prepared. How can I go to Jerry Saville Minister's Bible Institute supernaturally and not be prepared to receive what the Lord had in store for me? So I was prepared. 
So I remember one time, Pastor Wade gave uh, an altar call of people who had some issues. And I sat there and I thought, Lord, I'm not going up there because I don't think I have any issue. Concerning such and such, you told me this. Concerning such and such, you told me this. And there's this and this I miss. You. I repented of that, so I don't think I need to go there. And I sat there, and Pastor Wade again gave the second call for people to go to the front. We are just 16 of us. And then people went, um, others, and then he said, Davis, uh, would you please come along with me? Now, remember, he did really, not knowing me, I came to Bible school, and I'm, I, I was just been believing God for what he had told me to come and do in this ministry. And then um, when I went there, when I, I stood from where I was seated, going to the front, I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do, to do at the front. He said, come, can you please come along with me? What does that mean? I'm walking by faith. What am I going to do? I don't know. So he, he, when I got to the front, he said, stand over here. And as I'm ministering to them, I want you to be praying in tongues. I thought, ministering to other, other fellow Bible school, Bible school students, and for me, I'm praying in tongues? Fine. I did. And I prayed, and he walked, and he came to the end. And then uh, when he was done ministering to the Bible school students, he turned to me, and he went like something like this. Ecandro, Drobasto, Chlorastea. What did I do? I just lifted up my hands. And he went on and on. And he started prophesying over me the things that God had told me that past weekend. I had them written. He told me same things. And then laid hands on me. And we dismissed. After that, I don't remember even if I had anything else that he said. I was just looking. What has just happened? Why I was prepared to receive. And then I remember Bible school students coming after the service asking me, after the, 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 that class at some point, they said, Davis, how do you do this? How do you do this? I prepare. I prepare. I prepare my, my, my heart. How do you prepare? Let me, let me give you some of the preparation. There are physical preparations that we need to make. Just physical preparations. You, you just don't allow yourself to be distracted. Or something that Pastor Carla said over the, the, the years. You know, I had a, when I was sitting there, like a, you're sitting. Uh, you can't be watching a movie until 11 o'clock and 12. And then you come on Sunday and you think you're going to hear. That move is what is rolling your, in your head. Oh, Manchester United, until I don't know what time. And then you think you're going to receive on Sunday morning. There are those some, some things that you're going to do. And some physical preparations, again, you know, as a husband, that's not the time in the morning now you're telling your wife, where are my socks? And the, so the wife say, I, where did you put them? You are the one, you know, on a, on a Sunday morning. Woman, I've told you, don't ever do it Monday to Saturday, but don't do it even for God's sake on Sunday. <laughs> on Sunday morning. Tina and I agreed on one thing. Um, I know where my things are. All of them, I put them. But per adventure, maybe I misplaced the phone. Uh, somewhere I put it. I, I asked, where is my phone, honey? She said what? She'll answer. She'll answer or answer in question form. What did you call it? My phone. Who is it? You are the owner. You need to know where it is. That's a kind wife, yeah? But that actually, I mean, we joke about it. But in other words, know your things. Know where they are. Put them where they belong. You know, such and such. So actually, there are some physical things you need to pray. And then let me give you some to, to prepare. Let me give you something very important. Like that scripture we read there, Joshua 3, 5. Prepare yourself with the word. Sanctify 
Ephesians chapter 5 say, say about the sanctification with the washing of the water by the word. Go to the scriptures. Humble yourself before God. Take those scriptures into your heart and confess them and pray them out and let them get into your heart. What is it doing? In the old covenant, the washing cloths, physical washing. But in the new covenant, that is washing your mind with the word of God. You're confessing the word. You're praying. You're thanking God. Even for the service, you start thanking God for the service and on and on and on and on and on. When you come and wake up early in the morning, prepare, preparing yourself, when you come, your heart is ready. Every song will be in spirit and truth. Coming from your heart. You look at our praise and worship team and say, this is the most anointed one. They have always been but you are prepared. Will you rise up on your feet? Did you receive anything from this? This is founda- these are foundations of us receiving more from the Lord. Honor him. Honor him. Just lift your hands, please. May I have a team coming over here. Just lift your hands. I want to pray. I want you to speak to the Lord concerning what you've heard. There are some of you, you'll repent of some things that you've taken for granted. The Lord has put in your heart of what to do, but you know you've not done it. It may be even keeping time. Say, God, forgive me. I've taken this for granted. Something that testimony of uh, Mr. Arimo said that I took that for granted and and I didn't have any reason not to. That is an act of humility and, and repentance before the Lord. So, Father, thank you for your word. All what you are ministering to your people, they are your people, Father. And your your word says that you have blessed us with all spiritual blessing, the heavenly places. There's nothing that you are withholding from your people. Father, I ask you us. You've spoken to individuals concerning their own lives and concerning their priorities, changing things around and and honoring you. You say in your word, Father, who that honors me, I will honor. Father, may that be found in the hearts of your people, in true repentance, those who need to, and even all of us, in places that you have not honored you as you ought to. So, Father, that you may be prepared to receive from you every time in your presence not only on Sundays but every day of our lives that we be prepared to receive from you Father thank you for the power of your word you say so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it Father thank you for your word that has gone forth bringing healing. You sent your word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance from every kind of the destruction of the enemy. And I speak the blessing of God upon your people. The blessing of God. That the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and upon you and give you peace. I speak that peace over your people, Father. Even as we begin this new month of July, thank you for your protection. I stand in the place that you've called us to stand in as pastors in this church. And I speak your protection, Father, upon your people. I plead the blood of Jesus upon you. I plead the blood of Jesus upon your family. I plead the blood of Jesus upon your home, upon all your property, upon all that God has called you to do. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. In your traveling, in and out of this city, in and out of this country, I speak the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. I bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.